Morning, church. I'm glad everyone is here this morning joining us for worship. Whether you're joining us from Zoom Bible class or you're getting online, we're so glad you're here with us this morning. I want everyone to know that you are invited to our Zoom Bible class every Sunday morning at 945. Information for Zoom class goes out every week on our Facebook page, and I will email it out as well. We want everyone to join us if you want to. I'm excited for worship this morning because we keep adding more stuff to our services. This week we have scripture readings, we have an extra prayer, and we have just so much more coming up that I'm really excited about. We hope you keep joining us every week for worship, and I hope that every week we're worshiping in a worthy manner for God. I'm going to pass it off to our wonderful volunteers who are joining me this morning for worship. And as we begin, let's remember that we're worshiping and we're gathering together because of God. This is Higher Ground, number 539. I'm pressing on the upward way, new heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying us, high onward bound. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land. A higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. My heart has no desire to stay where doubts arise and fears dismay. Though some may dwell where these abound, my prayer, my aim is higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land. A higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. I want to live above the world, though Satan's darts at me are hurled. For faith has caught the joyful sound, the song of saints on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land. A higher plane than I have found, Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. I want to scale the utmost height and catch a gleam of glory bright. But still I'll pray till heaven I found. Lord, lead me on to higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land. A higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. This is Sweet Hour of Prayer, number 827. Sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer, that calls me from a world of care, and bids me at my Father's throne, make all my wants and wishes known. In seasons of distress and grief, my soul has often found relief, and oft escaped the tempter's snare by thy return, sweet hour of prayer. Sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer, the joy I feel, the bliss I share, of those whose anxious spirits burn with strong desires for thy return. With such I hasten to the place where God my Saviour shows his face. 
and gladly take my station there, and wait for the sweet hour of prayer. Sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer, thy wings shall my petition bear to him whose truth and faithfulness engage the waiting soul to bless. And since he bids me seek his face, believe his word and trust his grace, I'll cast on him my every care and wait for the sweet hour of prayer. Shall we pray? Our Heavenly Father, we're so grateful for this day that you've given us and the blessings that we have to be able to come here and worship you freely. We pray that you will be with all of us and with our leaders that we always are able to maintain and keep that right to worship you freely and never take it for granted. Lord, we pray that you will be with us as we go into this service, that we will be able to open our minds and our hearts to receive your word and be able to make application that will help us to apply it to our lives or in our daily walk so that when people see us, they see you. Lord, continue to be with us in this church. Bless this church as you have always. Be with us as we get into our service and may it be to your glory forever. And all these things we ask in Christ's name we pray. Amen. This is Yield Not to Temptation, number 905. Yield not to temptation, for yielding is sin. Each victory will help you, some other to win. Fight manfully onward, dark passions subdue. Look ever to Jesus, he will carry you through. Ask the Savior to help you, comfort, strengthen, and keep you. He is willing to aid you, he will carry you through. All right, it's time for the Lord's Supper. Would you pray with me? Thank you, Lord, for another day to come and participate in this reminder of your son's sacrifice for us. Let us take this bread in a manner that pleases you. Amen. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for Jesus' perfect love. Such great love that he died on that cross for us. Let us always remember that, but always let us remember that he lives now and forever. Let us take this fruit of the vine with love in our hearts. Amen. This is Tis Midnight and on Olive's Brow, number 334. Tis midnight and on Olive's Brow, the star is dimmed that lately shone. Tis midnight in the garden now, the suffering Savior prays alone. Tis midnight and from all removed, the Savior wrestles 
was alone with fears in the disciple whom he loved. It's not his master's grief and tears. Tis midnight and for others killed. The man of sorrows weeps in blood. Yet he that hath in anguish knelt is not forsaken by his God. Tis midnight and from ether plains is born the song that angels know unheard by mortals are the strains that sweetly soothe the Saviour's woe. Hi Church, today I'll be reading Jeremiah 17, 5 through 8. This is what the Lord says, Cursed is the one who trusts in man, who depends on flesh for his strength, and whose heart turns away from the Lord. He will be like a bush in the wastelands. He will not see prosperity when it comes. He will dwell in the parched places of the desert, in a salt land where no one lives. But blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. He will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when heat comes. Its leaves are always green. It has no worries in the year of drought, and it never fail, fails to bear fruit. Good morning, church. I'm glad to be here with all of you this morning. I'm glad that we can sing some songs, say some prayers, and take of the Lord's Supper together, even though we're all not in the same room. As we begin our sermon this morning, I want to take you back to the year 1998 because it was significant for many reasons. In 1998, it was the year that Google was founded. What started out as a small internet search engine has grown into a vibrant company. They have Gmail, Google Docs, and Google has their own phone. All of it started back in 1998 with this one company. 1998 was a significant year for baseball because it was the year that Mark McGuire broke the record for the single most home runs in a season. He had 70 in one season that broke Roger Maris's previous record of 61. He also beat out his opponent Sammy Sosa that year for the most home runs, and so it was huge for him. 1998 was also the year that Magic Kingdom opened at Disney World. But none of those things mattered because 1998 was the year that the Game Boy Color released. The Game Boy Color was this video game device that was created by Nintendo to beat out its predecessor, the original Game Boy. The first Game Boy was this giant brick and it only came in gray. But the Game Boy Color had a colorful shell and the video games could be played in color. It was a revolutionary handheld color gaming device of its time and I knew I had to have it. And so that year, I begged my parents for one. I asked them before and leading up to Christmas. I showed them pictures. I even prayed and I said, God, please will it that my parents get me a Game Boy Color. If it's in your will, wink, wink, make them get me a Game Boy Color. And so leading up to Christmas, I knew I was going to get it. I knew it had to happen. On Christmas Eve, I could barely sleep because I knew it was coming. I dreamed of playing my Game Boy Color the next morning. And on Christmas, I woke up, got
got my whole family up and said, we have to open presents right now. We have to do it. And as we opened presents, I was disappointed. I found some clothes, some socks, and some other toys, but I didn't find my Game Boy Color. And then I got the last present. It was a rectangle box, and I held it in my hands, and I said, this is it. This is my Game Boy Color. And so I grabbed the wrapping paper and tore it off and found Aladdin on VHS. I was pretty disappointed. I had prayed for it to be God's will that I get a Game Boy Color, and I was in crisis because it didn't happen. Over these next few weeks, I'm going to be doing a series of lessons on what I'm calling the pandemic practices. As many of you know, it's not going well right now in the Rio Grande Valley with COVID. It seems that it's spreading more. Businesses are beginning to shut down again. We might have to go into lockdown again. And so as we're going through another wave of the pandemic, I want us to have some applicable lessons on what we can do during this time. And this morning, and from our, my story, we're going to be looking at prayer. Our pandemic practice this morning is prayer, and all of our practices are going to begin with P. And this morning, I want us to take a look at the story of Jesus. And I want to see how he responds to a crisis and how he finds a solution to his problem. And I want to see how it turns out. So if you want to grab your Bibles, whether it be paper or whether it's on your phone, we're going to be in Luke chapter 22 this morning. And the lead up to the story is that Jesus is about to take the Last Supper with his disciples. He's gathered everyone together on the intent of having this last meal with them. But it's tense. There's anxiety. The disciples don't really know what's going on. They've heard before Jesus talking about how he's going to die, how he's going to suffer. But they don't know what's going to happen right before their very eyes. As they gather around for dinner, Jesus says this, in Luke chapter 22, verses 15 and 16. He said, and he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. Jesus, why are you about to suffer? What are you, what are you talking about? For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. And then Jesus takes the cup and he says, I'm not going to drink it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom. And then he takes bread and he breaks it. And he says, this is a representation of my body. Do this in remembrance of me. And Jesus institutes the Lord's Supper in this passage. And the dinner goes on and disciples still aren't sure what's happening, but it only gets worse. You could cut the tension in the room with a knife. Arguments break out among the disciples. They say, well, who's going to betray Jesus? Is it you? Is it you? Who is it? They argue about who's the most loyal to Jesus. And they argue about who's the greatest disciple among them. But none of these things really matter. There's so much that's about to happen, and the disciples are full of anxiety and tension and disease. And it makes me think about the disease that is going on in our world. COVID has made us tense. We don't know what's going to happen next. We keep waiting for the other shoe to drop because something worse has to happen. I mean, things can't go too well for too long before we think, oh, well, something bad has to happen to rectify all these good things. We might feel like just how the disciples felt after the Last Supper. And what Jesus does this morning in our story, it's really important. So if you want to read along with me, we're going to be in Luke chapter 22, and I'm going to read verses 39 through 42. And this is what it says. Jesus went out as usual to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples followed him. On reaching the place, he said to them, pray that you will not fall into temptation. It says pray right there. I want you to take note of that. It says, he withdrew about a stone's throw beyond them, knelt down, and prayed, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. There's so much that happens in this small section of scripture. First of all, Jesus takes his disciples to the Mount of Olives and he says, hey, I want you to pray. Because Jesus knows the importance of prayer. 
He wanted his disciples to have a relationship with God, to grow with him. And so he knew all the things that were about to happen. He says, you need to take a moment to pray. And then after that, he goes about a stone's throw from them, and he prays himself. The phrase, a stone's throw, is, well, what it means. It's about how far you could throw a stone. It's supposed to be about 20 to 100 feet. I haven't worked out a lot during COVID, so if I try to throw a stone right now, it might go like three feet. But what Jesus is doing in this passage is he's going out of earshot from the disciples. And it's not because he wants to be rude or selfish or doesn't want them to hear what he's about to pray, but he wants to be alone with God. Jesus knows that shortly after this, he's going to be arrested. He's going to be put on trial. He's going to be beaten and mocked. He's going to be paraded through the city, and then eventually he's going to be crucified. And before all of this, he takes a moment to be with God. And in his prayer, he says, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me. He's saying, God, if there's another way to do what we're about to do, let's do that. There has to be another option, a different path that we can take or we can go down. God, what else can we do besides what I know your plan is? And he's at a crisis and he's praying. He says, there's got to be another way. Yet he ends that prayer, that part right there. He says, not my will, but yours be done. Because although he's in agony and pain, he's praying. He doesn't freak out. He doesn't go around shouting and causing a lot of turmoil and problems for other people. But he prays. And I think about our situation in this world right now. When we're in crisis and we're unsure about what's going to happen and we're so anxious and tense, how are we praying? Are we praying? Prayer is important in our lives with God. Prayer helps build our relationship with God. We connect with God through prayer. We communicate with him all our wants and needs, the bad stuff that's going on in our lives. But we also communicate with him the good stuff. We praise him. We thank him for when the things we pray about, when he answers them, we thank him. We say, God, you are a good God. And so this morning, I want us to be praying. I want us to be continually praying during this pandemic. And no matter how things get good or bad, let's be praying this morning. But also, I want us to be praying for God's will in everything. That as events unfold, we're praying, we're saying, God, if this is your will, let it be. But help us through it. Let it be your will. As Jesus prayed in the garden, we need to pray it as well. Not my will, but yours be done. And when we say, if it's in your will, let it be done, we have to mean it. Because sometimes when we pray that, we don't. When we pray for God's will, we have the intention in mind, and we know how we want God to answer our prayer. When we pray, often there are two outcomes. If we pray to God and he answers our prayer, we're excited. We're jumping up and down for joy, and when we pray to God, we say, Oh God, thank you so much, and then we move on. But if God doesn't answer our prayer in the way we wanted, we say, God, I know I said if it was in your will, but you didn't answer my prayer. You didn't do what I wanted you to do, and we get upset, and we get frustrated. But even as Jesus is praying in the garden, and he's in pain and anguish, this is how he's reacting. Let's read verses 44 and 45. And it says in verse 43, An angel of heaven appeared to him and strengthened him. And being in anguish, he prayed more earnestly. And his sweat was like drops of blood when it came to the ground. Jesus is in so much pain, and he's hurt, and all these things are happening, that his blood vessels are bursting. He's sweating blood. Under this condition, it's known as hemotohydrosis, because Jesus is in so much pain and agony, his body is just bursting. It's exploding. But he doesn't stop praying. He's accepting the outcome of what he's praying, whether it's good or whether it's bad. And he doesn't get up in anger when he knows what's going to happen. But he prays harder. He prays even more earnestly. He's on the ground saying, God, whatever happens, it's your will. 
If there's another way, let's do that, but it's your will that's most important. It's what you want that's most important. And I think that's a great prayer that we should be praying right now is, God, I don't know what's happening. God, I don't know what's going on, but you must be in control. We need to be praying for God's will. As our schools close down, and we don't know if our children, our grandchildren, if they're going to be able to go back to school, we need to be praying for God's will. As businesses shut down, as we have to social distance and wear masks, we need to be praying for God's will. If we have to go into lockdown and we're under isolation and we're depressed, we need to be praying for God's will. Because sometimes I think when we pray in God's will, we're not saying, God, not your will, but my will be done. Because it's what I want. I want to be free. I want the world to open up. I want this virus to go away. We need to be praying for God's will. As the world closes down, we need to pray that God opens the right doors. Prayers that I were looking at this week kind of boiled down to this point. God, do not let my desires blind me to your will, but give me peace for your path. And so this morning is our pandemic practice. Let's pray. In the morning, in the evening, during the day, when we're happy, when we're sad, let's pray. Let's grow closer to God. Let's pray for those who need it. Maybe call someone and say, hey, let's pray together right now that we can be strengthened, that God can help us during this time. And let's be praying for God's will. And knowing that no matter what happens and whatever the outcome, he's hearing our prayers and listening to us. Because he's in control and he's going to guide us through this time. It's his will and we're living this life. And if we stay faithful to him, he will get us through it. So let's keep praying. This is I Need Thee Every Hour, number 837. We will sing verses 1, 2, and 4. I need thee every hour, most gracious Lord. No tender voice like thine can peace afford. I need thee, oh, I need thee. Every hour I need thee. Oh, bless me now, my Savior. I come to thee. I need thee every hour, stay thou nearby. Temptations lose their power when thou art nigh. I need thee, oh, I need thee. Every hour I need thee. Oh, bless me now, my Savior, I come to thee. I need thee every hour, most holy one. Oh, make me thine indeed, thou blessed Son. I need thee, oh, I need thee, every hour I need thee. Oh, bless me now, my Savior, I come to thee. This is Be With Me, Lord. Number 778, we'll sing the first three verses.
Be with me, Lord, I cannot live without thee. I dare not try to take one step alone. I cannot bear the loads of life unaided. I need thy strength to lean myself upon. Be with me, Lord, and then if dangers threaten, if storms of trial burst above my head, if lashing seas leap everywhere about me, they cannot harm or make my heart afraid. Be with me, Lord, no other gift or blessing thou couldst bestow, could with this one compare, a constant sense of thy abiding presence, where I am, to feel that thou art near. Good morning. Uh, before we have our prayer, I would like to have a, have a little announcement. Uh, here, here we have a custom or tradition, whatever you want to call it, uh, that when a member moves, uh, that we have a little dinner, lunch, after services, and present them with a Bible. Uh, due to the circumstances we're in with the virus, uh, a dinner is not a practicable, but we uh, we still want to re acknowledge that tradition. Uh, Jim Wigington, who's been a member since 1971, raised a couple of boys here. Uh, it will be moving. Uh, Jim was one of those people that uh, quietly went about visiting everybody, checking on people, making sure everybody was okay. Uh, and he was always here. He was, uh, when he got to where he couldn't get out, uh, he was one of the first ones to call me when our camera didn't work. He was also, uh, just on a side note, he was, uh, he would visit my dad every day and the two of them would, uh, swap tales, I guess. But, uh, my dad really looked forward to those visits. Uh, Monday, he will be moving to Florida to be close to his family, his niece that lives there. And uh, we wish Jim safety and well. And we do have a Bible which we will present to him. Uh, let us pray. Uh, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Uh, our grace graceful and merciful God, and we love you. Uh, I ask you to be with the members here. Uh, there's those here that are hurting and need medically and physically and mentally. Uh, I ask you to be with them. Uh, whatever circumstances they're in, uh, guide each of us as we try to help them God to help us to do the right thing. Uh, when I hurt others, give me the strength to own up to it and, an apolo and apologize with love. And when I hurt someone, give them the strength to forgive, for me to forgive with love. I pray that you give protection and comfort to the men and women in the military and our law enforcement officers. Uh, be with them as they go about their duties and bring them home safely to their families and let us give them the honor to do them. Uh, be with the uh, first responders, the ambulance drivers and the uh, medical people, the nurses and the doctors and all the people that maintain the hospital. Be with them as they go about taking care of the rest of us. Uh, keep them safe. Oh, guide us, uh, this con congregation, 
as we try to follow your word and uh, help us to strive to be more like Jesus in the way we live our lives, the way we talk to people. In Jesus' name, amen.